Hi guys, my name is Jason Lanier. I'm here in uh, Ethiopia. And uh, you know, every time I come out and film at places like this, um, I get a lot of questions. Hello. I get a lot of questions as to uh, how do you do photojournalism? What are the rules? What are the ethics? What are the morals that you live by? What do you guys? How do you take pictures of people with that, with with or without their permission? Uh, how do you secure yourself? All these types of things. And so, what I wanted to do was film a quick video on my rules of uh, photojournalism. Um, I never went to photojournalism school. I don't know exactly what they would say, but this is the world of photojournalism and the codes of photojournalism according to me, nobody else. So I'm gonna go through some rules with you guys, share them with you, and uh, hopefully it'll help you guys to be safe, to be secure, to be respectful when you guys are out and about taking pictures of people. So number one is security, guys. Um, wherever you're at, make sure that you're safe. A lot of the places that a lot of photographers want to go for photojournalism, are quite frankly, they're usually third world countries, places that are underdeveloped. Because we want to uh, enter these, these really dynamic, diverse places, what ends up happening is we put ourselves in harm's way. Um, just on this trip alone, we've had rocks thrown at us. Um, at, I, I swear, I'm getting a huge crowd even as we're filming this. Anytime you pull up cameras, you're gonna, you're gonna bring up security issues. So how do you take care of these security issues? Number one, um, have some sort of a local helper or guide. Have somebody who can translate for you have somebody who can talk, help talk your way out of scenarios. Have somebody who can read the body language and know the ins and outs of the, the culture. Um, because you may miss a cue, you may miss something. As it relates to your gear, what you guys are gonna wanna do is go minimal. Um, the less gear, the better. A lot of the times when you're doing street photography, you're either gonna use, for most photographers, a 35 millimeter lens a 50, or a 50 millimeter lens. That's, that's usually the, the lens of choice for a lot of street photographers. I like to use both. Um, typically, if I can, I'll take two bodies. Uh, one with a macro lens, like a 90 millimeter macro, and the other one with a more of a wide, like a 35 millimeter. And the reason I can do that is because with the wide angle lens, uh, like a 35, it's not super wide, but I don't want super wide. I want to actually see the people that I'm photographing. I also take a macro so I can do two things. I can um, get shots of portraits of people, because a, a, a macro lens is fantastic for portraits. But at the same time, the other thing that I can do is I can get detail shots if I need to. So uh, I hope that that helps with the gear, guys, but the, the less gear you have, the better. The less target you make yourself, the better. Um, th those gear and security kind of tie in hand in hand. So uh, if you do have to take any sort of gear with you, I recommend wearing a backpack um, and, and having something that's attached to you. And that is a really good quality backpack that will lock up because people will um, try to unzip it, people will try to take your stuff, so on and so forth. As it relates to security as well, one thing to do is make sure to, uh, if you can, travel with more than one person. Traveling by yourself is always going to put you more in harm's way. And when you are uh, traveling with more of a group, um, you have uh, some more security for you. Perhaps the most important question re related to photojournalism or shooting in these kind of scenarios is how do I shoot and be respectful? I mean, uh, anytime I'll post a video or an image, people say these, these, these folks aren't animals for exhibition they aren't this isn't a fishbowl we're, we're just viewing them and I couldn't agree more these people aren't just here for our pleasure guys um, so um, if I'm shooting and, and I'm shooting with a wide-angle lens and I'm just walking the streets I will take a picture uh, if the person objects I'll absolutely stop taking a picture the only caveat to, to that would be if they were doing something that needed to be captured photojournalistically because they were doing something wrong or there was a travesty and you were taking pictures of something that needed to be documented for the world to see. Outside of that, just taking pictures to understand culture and to see people. If you're walking by and you take a shot with a wide angle lens, I'm not gonna walk up to each and every single one of those people and ask them for permission, I'm not. Uh, my, my rule of thumb is, you know, in most places we're having our picture or video likeness taken a lot of the times without our permission and the same holds true for us taking pictures as photographers. Now what's the difference? The difference between that and going up and taking a portrait of somebody is if I walk up to somebody and I put my camera in front of them and I'm, I'm five feet from them, um, I'm taking a portrait of them. I'm singling them out. Um, I should absolutely do that with their permission. So I'll walk up and you don't need to speak the language. You walk up and you go, can I take your picture? They'll understand what you're saying. You walk up and say, can I take your picture? Some will say no and some will say yes. The ones who say yes, um, I, I do pay them. I'll take their picture and then I will give them some money. I think it's the least I can do because they're doing something for me. Um, as a For those who say no, I drop it and I leave it alone. One of the main reasons why I uh, compensate those that I actually take the portraits of as well is because um, a lot of the times when I take other pictures of people I can give them a copy of the picture I can 
I can do something to, to thank them for letting me take their, their image. Um, a lot of these folks in third world countries, there's no email, there's no websites, there's, there's no way to communicate with them. So having the ability to uh, get one of my images is virtually impossible. So for that reason, I feel very good about compensating them for this. Uh, there's other times when you're going into places where you guys just need to understand the way a lot of cultures work, especially third world countries, it, it's pay to play. If you're, if you're going to take pictures of something, you're going to pay to do it. Uh, going into a lot of these places, if you're going into churches, you're going to pay. No matter where you're going, you're going to pay and you need to understand that. To that end, if you're going to go to a place, ask a lot of questions and that's again why it's a good idea to have a translator. Ask lots of questions. If you don't ask these questions and you're not going to get the answers that you're seeking. I've gone to places and I've said, can I take pictures? And they say, okay, 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 ish, ish, ish. And then you walk in and before you know it, they want to charge you not only to the entrance fee, but then they want to charge you a photography fee. And then if you hit that record button on your camera, they want to charge you a video fee. And before you know it, it goes on and on and on and on and on. And then worst case scenario, you get in there, you've already paid all those fees and they say, nope, you can't take video in here or whatever you might actually want to shoot. So ask those questions ahead of time. We were recently, uh, during this trip in Ethiopia, we went to a place and they, um, it was a church. And bef before we knew it, but what, by the time we'd asked all of our questions, it was $500 just to film any video of the church. So we said, forget it, it's not worth it to us. There's another example that I've already shared a video on where we went in, we paid our fee, and, and the priest the, the, the inside of the church allowed us to actually do a portrait session with him. Now, I compensated him for that. Why should I not? I absolutely should compensate him for his time. So, um, and if I can't send him pictures, I still will. So guys, understand that. Understand that those are the rules. And if you don't want to play by those rules, then you're going to have a t tough time taking pictures around here. If I'm going to take somebody's picture and potentially submit it to a competition, to a magazine or whatever it might be, I need to have their, I need to uh, have their permission and I need to compensate them for that. And I, I don't think it should be done any other way. I don't think it's correct for people to walk up to somebody, walk right into their face, take a picture, and just to walk away and give that person nothing. I think that's wrong. So last but not least, guys, uh, the most important thing to photojournalism is your behavior and how you act. Uh, if you treat people with respect, you're gonna most, most, most times you're gonna get that respect reciprocated back to you. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So see, he, Salam. No. So he clearly wants to be part of my video. Now see, instead of me getting upset, this is a great example. Instead of me getting upset, he, I put my arm around him and now he's reciprocated out and put my, his arm around me. Now, do I have your permission to use this in the video? Thank you. <laughs> sock, sock, sock. <laughs> Guys, your behavior is super important. You can see that I'm completely casual with these folks. I don't act better than them. I, whatever words I can learn, I do learn. And those words go a long way to ingratiating yourself into the culture that you're, you're, you're walking into. If you are one with them, if you're not afraid to touch them, if you're not afraid to interact with them, uh, you will find that you're photo excursions, your photojournalism will be 10 times better, guys. It really, really, really makes a huge difference. So be one with them. Don't don't act uh, better than them. And, uh, and just show them that you are there because you think they're beautiful and you want to take their picture because you think they're beautiful, not because it's a freak show. And that you want to help them. So I hope this has helped, guys. Um, I don't have all the answers to everything in the photography universe. I never have uh, pretended to, to know them. But what I, what I do know I share with you, and these things have worked for me, and I've shot in five different continents, and it's worked. It's worked, it's worked, it's worked. So until next time, guys, keep shooting, never give up on your dreams. Treat people with respect, and you'll have it reciprocated back to you. Uh, and remember, you only have one chance to get it right. Talk to you later. Bye.